God understands the different levels that we're all at, but he's saying, listen, wherever you're at now, I'm encouraging you to come up to a whole nother place. If you're not praying, I'm going to pray and decree impartation that you're going to start praying. If you're already praying, but you're not, you know, we're going to pray that it increases. Then if you're praying for nine hours in, in tongues, I'm going to have you lay hands on me and pray for impartation to help me out. But, but I mean, listen, we all need to be praying, praying in the spirit. If you're not praying in tongues, we'll pray for you to get filled with the Holy Spirit. But I promise you, the Holy Spirit, he's saying, I want you to go beyond. I want you to experience the oil, the glory. I remember there were a time, I, uh, Peter and I, we were in Fort Lauderdale, and we were at Mahesh Chavda's church, and that's where uh, Derek Prince had started this church. And they were worshiping in there, and I mean, these people, it was midweek, so you know midweek is different than Sundays. Midweek are those who want to go the extra mile most of the time, right? right. And so I know some people work, I get all that, but they were going the extra mile. And I mean, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I, the only way I was able to get out of the service, I had to crawl on my, four, on my hands and knees to get I couldn't get up. The glory of the Lord was so thick. It, it, you know, like it might take you 12 months to get healing from ministry. Boom, the glory of God comes, it nails you. And you have healing and deliverance that takes place. But listen to this. Um, so we, get, we know that God has uh, designated us. Remember, just say, I am a house of prayer. And it will not be controlled by thieves. Don't you hate thievery? Don't you hate injustice? We've been on this mountain long enough. And, and so the Lord, I'm just going to segue here a moment. The Lord, uh, a couple of weeks ago, was speaking to me out of Deuteronomy. And I know he meant it for me over certain things, but I'm going to still give it to you. And so it, in Deuteronomy, and this is all related to prayer, it says in Deuteronomy 1-2, it says that they were on an 11-day journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Bernia, Bornea. And um, it's interesting because it, that word Horeb, when I looked it up, it means a waste place to have slow decay, to be in ruins, and to be dried up. And a lot of times we've been on a journey that seems like it has been dried up, that it has been a waste place, and it seems as though sometimes that, like, what in the world? It's only supposed to be 11 days. Lord, you said the suddenlies of the Lord, and it seems like 40 years, right? And so it says here, now it came to pass that Moses spoke to them and so forth and so on. In verse 6 it says, the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, in that waste place, in that place that seemed to be dried up, in that stinky place, saying, you have dwelt here long enough at this mountain. And, and that word dwelt there means to, um, to, um, to, uh, to break off old mindsets, but it means to be married, to abide, to settle, to remain. And one of the things in, in shifting our prayer life is we have to come out of agreement with certain lies that we have believed. We cannot allow that, that, that whole mindset of, of, of defeat or I'm just so frustrated, you know, I don't know what the point is, or the enemies of a past, he's saying to us today, the word of the Lord, you have dwelt here at this mountain long enough. Whatever your situation is, the Lord is saying you have dwelt here. You have remained, you have abided here long enough with this mindset where you have become one, where you have become married to that line. You have dwelt here long enough, period. Basa, you need to move on. And I said, well, Lord, <laughs> help. And then it says, turn and take your journey and go to the mountains. Now, isn't this interesting? He says, go to the mountains of the Amorites. That was the enemy. The Amorites, they, they try to make you feel weak and feeble and, and guilty and, and shame-filled. Well, the Lord's saying, face your fears. Turn, turn, you know, make that shift. And he's saying, listen, I will, I will help you to break camp, turn and make your journey, and go and face the enemy because you have enemies. We all have enemies. And what are we going to do when it happens? Roll over and play dead or just cry and say, you know, the enemy's trying to take me out? He's under our feet. Yes, and you might feel like it at times, but that's why we gather together. That's why we pray. That's why we decree the word of the Lord because we are not defeated. He is. He, the Lord took the keys away from him. 
So we have to come out of that and say, he's after me. No, he's not after you. He's afraid that you're going to be after him. So he's saying, face, face the enemy. There's the Amorites. You're going to go. You know, when they were crossing over, when the Lord spoke to them about the promised land, the Lord didn't remove the giants. Now, I would have been thrilled if he did. But he wants to learn how to fight our battles. Right? We can't have everybody else fighting it. We have to do it. So now, the next scripture, you can go to the next slide. I think I have it right. Okay. All right, Matthew 16, 18 through 19. And by the way, before I say this, the deeper conference that's coming up, we have um, Jane Hammond, my husband's but this kid, Jonathan Stidham. Um, there's they're prophets like you can't believe and 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 we have a lot of the young prophets that will be here if you're not a prophet doesn't mean you can't attend it's for people that are evangelists it's for you know uh, apostles it's it's for the fivefold but it's really encouraging people to gather together young and old because majority of the people there are going to be young you know i mean we're young but they're just a little younger than us and, um, you know, so it's tri-generational. That's how we're to operate. But I really want to encourage you to come out. It's going to be really amazing. You can check out this guy online on, on YouTube, Jonathan Stidham. Wow, the way they flow in, in the power of God is amazing. Okay, I'll go back. All right, Matthew 16, 18 through 19, it says, And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades or death will not overpower it by preventing the resurrection of the Christ. And I will give you the keys, authority of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose, permit, and declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. Now, we pray this all the time. I'm sure you hear us in this church. I bind you, Satan. In other words, I forbid you from having operation and whatever because we have that authority. We have that right to forbid, and we have that right to permit. And it says here, um, but he said, I will build my church. And that word church there, when you look it up, is the word ecclesia. Now, Dutch Sheets has the most amazing teaching on ecclesia, on the church. And um, so I really encourage you, you can probably go up on YouTube. Uh, first time I ever heard it, him speak on that was at, at Global Spears uh, a couple years ago, right? But I Googled it. I Googled, I just wanted to see what, like if you Google it, what it says. And so I'm going to read to you about the Ecclesia. So he, remember, he says, I will build, he said, on this rock I will build my church. It wasn't for just a sweet little gathering and for, you know, a cook off. And, and, and listen, that's all fine. But that's not who we are. And so the Ecclesia was a principal assembly of the democracy of ancient Athens. The assembly was responsible for declaring war, military strategy, and electing an, um, the strategio and other officials. It was responsible for nominating and electing magistrates. And, um, and so then the, the other portion, as you can see, they were called out to govern. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. We are not just called to be nice little Christians who turns our cheek when someone's getting us upset. It's more than that. It says here, uh, for centuries before the New Covenant was written, the Greeks were using the word ecclesia to describe a group of citizens called out for governmental purposes. They met on a regular basis, and they voted, and they discussed new law proposals and military strategy. There was a ga they gathered around the empire, the Roman Empire, and, or king, to hear and record his words, and they were to see that his will and desires were implemented across the kingdom. We are called to implement his desires across the kingdom. Right. And it says, this is how we as the ecclesia are called to function as, under, uh, as rulers under the supreme uh, ruler. We are to decree his voice. And, um, and to decree those things. In Genesis 1, uh, 26, it says that we are called to rule. We're called to subdue. I just want to get it. I always say it backwards. Um, we're called to, hold on a second here. Um, and God blessed them. 
us and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion over the fish of the seas, the bird of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. He's saying, see, I've given you, you know, this authority. So he's called us to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, to have dominion, right? So th th these are strong words. All right, so we all have that authority in us. You know, a lot of times people think that, well, I, I don't really have that in me. It's just for a certain group of people. Mm -mm. That we all have that authority to rule and to govern. So we start in our home. Well, first of all, we start in our own lives. Then in our home. Then in our workplace. I mean, majority of y'all work, right? So we have that right to pray. We have that right to degree the thing. When I, and I've shared this here before, but when I worked for the airlines, I was in a department that was evil. <laughs> it was evil. And so how many of you ever worked in a place where you felt like you were in hell? Okay. Well, it was hell on earth. And when I got this job, I thought, you have got to be kidding me. But I knew I needed to transfer out. So here's the thing. I was in a situation that I needed to transfer because I would have gotten fired there. So I knew I needed to transfer out. But it, what I, I really felt it was a good thing, but it, it seemed, when I got there, it seemed to be worse than where I was. But it was, God was, this was an open door, and it was hell. <laughs> and I thought, you have got to be kidding me, God, you know? And he said, well, what I want you to do is pray. I had to be at the job at 6.30 in the morning at LaGuardia Airport, I would get up at 3 or 3.30, and I would pray in tongues for a half hour. I would read the word and decree the word because I was afraid to go to work because it was hell, because it, it, it was just so dark. And I thought, Lord, and it seemed so overwhelming to me, and it seemed like how in the world is there going to be any kind of breakthrough? And uh, I, I didn't, you know, this is in, in 1980, you know, or 79 uh, no, maybe 80, 81. I, you know, they didn't have YouTube, or as I used to call it, YouTunes, YouTube, and different things that we can get a message right away. You had to really get on your face before the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I need you to help me to break through. And I didn't, it wasn't like, I decree in Jesus' name. I didn't know how to do any of that yet. I just knew, Lord, help. Here's the word. Lord, I'm praying your word. And, Lord, I, I'm just going to, I'm worshiping you. You know, it's just little baby steps. And each day that I got, went to work, I mean, it was really a rough environment. I, I would see a change. And at first, they mocked me. They, and I didn't go in there as church lady. You know, I'm born again, and praise the Lord, I didn't do any of that. I just thought, you know what, let them sense the spirit of the Lord on me. I had to honor my job, right, my position. And, but when it, the opportunity came... And the Lord opened that door. I shared the gospel. I, I was always pretty evangelistic, and I liked that environment. Well, it, it, they, they would met, mock me. They, they cussed like sailors. I mean, it was really a vile environment. I really mean it. I had someone wanted to fight me. <laughs> it, it was just, like, rough. And each day I prayed, and there were days that I thought, Lord, I am so discouraged. I think I want to quit here because it's not worth it to me. And the Lord said, no. You're to change the atmosphere there. And I'm like, oh, great. How am I going to do that? So prayer. It was decreeing the word and just standing. I was there by 18 months. By the time I left, and I kid you not, everyone was saved except two people. They, they, the atmosphere, I'm, I'm saying this is little old me that doesn't have what we have available to us today. We all have this ability and authority, every single I'm no different than any of you, because the power of the word of God works. The power of Holy Spirit is in us. We have that dunamis power, that, that, that dunamis power that breaks things through. It's like a battering ram. That's why you keep at it, and you keep at it, and you keep at it. It's like a battering ram that breaks things open. I've seen God too many, too many times break through when I was the, the, the least of them, the minority, where I thought, how in the world is this going to change? See, but that's not my problem. That's his problem. He puts you in a situation then you know that God is going before you and he's going to be that rear guard. And so the one woman, uh, as far as I know to this day, who really gave me a hard time, she is in ministry in the Middle East. 
You know, God turned things around. You know why? Because the enemy doesn't want those people that you're going to be affiliated with to get saved. He wants you to give up. But you see, we have the greater one. It says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We have that authority. We are the ecclesia. We are to rule. We are to govern in our sphere. Now, I don't mean control people. I'm not so, that's witchcraft. When you're trying to manipulate, when you're trying to control, when you're trying to, you know, to, to uh, just you know, harm a person through that manipulation, that is wrong. And if you're doing that, you need to repent because it's a spirit of witchcraft. When somebody tries to manipulate you and they won't talk to you because you're not doing what they want to do, that is witchcraft. And it's wrong, and you need to bind it and take authority over it or confront the individual or however the Lord tells you to do it. But don't you do it because it's wrong. But God caused these people to shift and the light to come in that dispelled the darkness. He loved them. They weren't any better than me, or I'm not any better than them. God's saying, listen, I love these people, and I want you to take the time to minister to them. You have me, my spirit, my dunamis power in you, that as you decree that thing and as you stand and you pray, you will see change happen. You will see just recently, and I shared this before, but, I mean, we're boasting on the Lord. Uh, we were going to overseas, and I forget where I was going, but I think it was Madrid. I don't know. And um, everybody was in first class but me business poor me and I said Lord I'm asking you for a miracle to to get me an upgrade because you know we all have a lot of miles and so you can get upgrades why not who wants to fly coach if you can fly business right and you have not because you ask not so I, I called up they said no you can, no forget it sold out I go to the counter in Philadelphia and uh, they said to me no uh, you can't it's it's booked I said Lord you promised me I don't care what they say. I know you said you're a miracle working God. I go to the gate. No. We went to the Admirals Club. The guy said no. And he went, wait a minute. He said, oh, my. He goes, I think something just opened up. He said, but I can't handle it right here. You'll have to call and call, um, 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 I think it was American Airlines. And so I said, well, how much is it going to cost me? And he said, about $300. I'm like, mm, all right. I call up, and the guy, I said, hurry up, hurry up, get that seat for me. <laughs> you know, I'm like panicking a little, you know. And the guy, I said, how much is it? And he goes, $75. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, I am taking that first class upgrade, you know. See, everything, everything up until the last minute said, you're not getting it. Said no. But see, God has final say. That's why we have to build our faith up. It's not just like, all right, God, I want this thing now. No, it's developing that rapport with him. It's developing that prayer life with him. It's like, Lord, every day you're worshiping. You know, you, can, you put your worship music on or however you do. Sing the scriptures to him. Worship. Meditate on the word. Speak the word out loud over yourself. Lord, I'm the head and not the tail. Lord, you said that you've given me wisdom. Lord, I have the spirit of revelation in us. I mean, I, I quote that from from Ephesians all the time, Ephesians 1. I read Psalm 91. All the scriptures, I write them out. I'm constantly, I have 800 journals home because I write and I write. That's how it works for me. I'm not, I don't like the computer as much. I like to write, but I get the word in me. And that's the beauty of this thing. He wants it for all of us. Now, it's not like, oh, well, just for leadership. Oh, well, just for people who are in, in, you know, serving the Lord for 28 years, you know. No. He's saying, bow your knee to me. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. That's the only thing that brings transformation, that brings change in people's lives. That's the only thing that when, when we were going to have birth, give, when I was going to give birth to my son, and you've heard this a thousand times, but it was... For nine months, I decreed the word. I never expected that they were going to tell me my son was dead. And that's, you know, you get a little aggravated over that stuff. And so, you know, you, you don't accept that as your answer when, when all that time you've been praying. And, and so the Lord, you know, broke through, and, and my son was born totally healthy. So he wants us to intercede. Now, you can go to the next slide. So we know that we're called to govern. We have the authority of Christ in us. Now, when we intercede, one of the definitions for intercession is paga. And that word means to collide with, to encroach upon, to drive in, to strike again, to be violent against, to make attack, and to invade. There is absolutely nothing passive about prayer. Now, can you understand why the enemy would not want us praying? Because we are invading his territory. 
We're taking back what's rightfully ours. And we have a covenant with the Lord. And that covenant is for us to walk in those promises of the Lord. It's for financial restitution. It's for family restoration. It's for health. It's for deliverance. That's what, you know, when, when you get saved, that word salvation is soteria, and it means healing, deliverance, prosperity, preservation, safety. It's not that you're going just going to heaven, which is awesome, but he's calling us to live, uh, you know, heaven here on earth, that, yes, you have my head problems, but God wants you to know that you're in the head and not the tail and that you can stand and believe God for, for all that he has for us. And it's not just for a certain group of people again. If you're struggling with addictions, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, you're struggling with, with fear. Uh, it's mindsets that we have to come out of agreement with. The Bible says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. But if every time that's all you're thinking on and rehearsing day in and day out about, you know, how afraid you are, well, guess what? You're going to be afraid. Right. And it's going to take you facing that Amorite. It's going to take you facing that fear and say, no. I don't care if my knees are rocking. I am doing this thing because, Lord, your word says that, that, that I can decree that thing and it shall be established unto me, that I can decree that breakthrough to occur. Now, there, there's a timing in the Lord. And a lot of times it could be us that we have hindrances where we may have unforgiveness. That's the number one area that can really hinder you from having breakthrough in your life, in your prayer life. It could be that you have unforgiveness towards yourself. It could be that you have unforgiveness towards others. Check your heart out. It's not worth it. And it doesn't mean, and I shared this the other night, you don't roll over and play dead, but it means that you, you know that, say, Lord, I, it's not worth it. I don't want anything blocking my, my time with you. It's that, and then it, what does it happen? Then there's a cycle of doubt and unbelief. So I have areas of doubt in my heart or unbelief that will hit me. So what do I do? I get the word. I'm not going to say, yeah, God, I don't believe you anymore. You know, I mean, my flesh would want me to do that, but I know that, that, that he's faithful. I ha most of us have lived. <laughs> we weren't all raised up in church without God and it's way better to live with God. Right. And so the enemy, so he, he knows that we're born again. So what does he want to do? He wants us then to pull back. He wants us to be lukewarm and wishy-washy. He wants us to, you know, we are called to be militant people. And by that, I don't mean that we're going up to people and smacking them upside their head. I don't mean that. I mean just in resolute in your spirit. I am not backing down, devil, and you are better back down because you're under my feet. In our prayer time, Lord, like a battering ram, that woman, um, what's her name, in Luke, I think it's 16, the, the woman that kept going to the unjust judge, and she kept going. And one of the versions says that, oh, my God, this woman is wearying me. He said he was an unjust judge. She's wearying me, and I am like one of the versions said, black and blue from her. I'm not letting go. Well, guess what? We are not letting go because we are pressing through because God gives us a strategy, and he's saying, look, you keep hitting that thing like a battering ram, but you have to hear from the Lord. See, and there, there's a maturity that we get in prayer. So the more you're in his presence, then you're learning to discern his voice. Because sometimes we're, we're trying to get something out of our emotion, right? So that's where we have to learn to discern what is this God. And then that's where you get counsel from people that you know that are mature in the Lord. Because a lot of times, you know, and I've said this before, I have people come and say, I heard from God. And basically they're saying, I want your opinion, but they're really not. But they heard from God. They just want you to agree with them. That's wrong. It's like, Lord, let's pray together and see what the spirit of the Lord said. We're not God. We all need to get on our faces and hear from him as well. So the Holy Spirit is saying to us, listen, when you're in intercession, there's a colliding, there's, a, there's an encroaching that's taking place. There's a strike against the plot and plan of the enemy. So prayer, there, you know, moves mountains. Prayer unlocks the spiritual realm. I wrote, prayer breaks barrenness. Prayer breaks limitation. Uh, resistance to satanic strategies. You know, there are times that you just know there's no rhyme or reason, and all this calamity could be happening. All this stuff is hitting you from the left and the right and back, and, and it's coming against you. That's a spiritual attack. We have to understand that there, there are spirits that are specifically assigned against us. 
The Bible's real clear about that. This isn't, you know, hokey, hokey pokey stuff. But you know what aggravates me is that it's okay for the world to have Harry Potter stuff all over the place, which is full of satanic stuff and teaching people how to put curses, and they people let their kids read it. Um, and, and we can do, uh, you know, you have everything like with Disney, and, and so much of it is, is satanically laced, and, and the movies are showing... You know, little kids having homosexual relationships. But God forbid we mention what the Bible talks about the spirit realm. And we're crazy. And we're too fanatical. Well, that's why things have gone down the toilet. Because we're not dealing with what we need to be dealing with. And God has called us to recognize these things. When Paul and Silas were in Acts. And they were off to prayer, it says. They were going to prayer. That girl with divination kept saying to them, Oh, these are men of the most high God. And, and you might say, well, she's saying all the right things. But she was coming from the wrong spirit and it was a distraction and Paul got mad at her and he rebuked that spirit of divination that spirit hates prayer so we're also dealing with a spirit realm that comes against us to pray and it's called a spirit of divination in other words it's a python spirit because when you look that word up it's pythos and that spirit of divination tries to coil itself and take around you and take your breath away now, how many times have you tried to pray and you felt like there's just this resistance? I, you know, I don't want to pray. You know, that's just too much with this stuff. I'm telling you, there's a spiritual assignment against us. But Paul, and look what happened. Paul, you know, they, the, the town got mad, mad at him. And they, they beat them. I'm not saying we have to get beat, but I mean, sometimes in our, in our emotions and what we're going through, we get that, that beating, that attack. But they got beat. But what did they do? They praised. They worshiped. I mean, how many of us, after we got beat and we're hung upside down, going to be praising and worshiping in prison? Well, they knew that there was a strategy that kicks the enemies behind. He hates worship. He hates prayer. He hates the word. These are the weapons that God has given us to overthrow the enemy. And so what did he do? They were worshiping, and they were praising the Lord. There was a, they, they said there were, uh, the uh, military was in front of him, behind him. He was all locked up, and the angels came in and unlocked it. See, there's a spiritual uh, angelic host that's on our behalf, too. It's not, we can't reason all this stuff out. We have to understand it's supernatural. The angels came in. How many of you need angels to come in and unlock certain things? I know I do. And so I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm going for it, Lord. And, and so the angels came in and unlocked him. And then so the jailer said, oh, my God, he went to kill himself because, you know, otherwise the uh, Pharaoh, whoever it was, not Pharaoh, the Roman emperor would have killed him. And so he said, you know, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ye and your household shall be saved. Amen. And so that's what God is saying. Listen, wake up. We have to come out of passivity. And we have to understand we are called. We are called to walk in this power and authority, to break off the limitations where there's been a limitation. We are not seeker friendly. We are not seeker friendly. I'm going to tell you that right now. And so God has called us to be God-friendly, to fear the Lord. I am not happy. I'm not. And listen, I, I like to be happy and cool. I want the air conditioning to be right. I want this to be right. I want everybody to smile at me. But it doesn't always happen, right? Listen, the Bible says we are to fear God and not man. And we have gone we have so twisted this thing around where we are so concerned about pleasing man. I had a family member say, if you get in and out in an hour, it'll be better for you. Well, well, you know, God doesn't always work that way. And it's not about in and out in an hour. It's about, Lord, what is pleasing to you? I'm not saying you have to drag things out either. And if the presence of the Lord is in there, then leave. But here's the thing. God is saying to all of us, we have got to build our house of prayer. We have got to say, God, what is pleasing to you? I have to stop with all the con artists, with all the baloney. I don't want to just be a fig tree that looks good and has all these leaves around me and there's no fruit. I want to see the shift. I want to see that change. And God is saying to all of us, come on, I love you too much to let you stay where you're at. And I want you to have this breakthrough. I want you to go up. I want you to, to have peace. Listen, you can have turmoil in your life, but have the peace of God that passes all understanding. You cannot buy peace. 
I said, Lord, you are Jehovah Shalom. That he's the God of all peace. He's the God of all comfort. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. That's who he is. Are you studying the character of God? Are you studying the names of God? You know, only God can cause this hope to come in us. He says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. He says, but I'm a God of hope. I'm a God of all comfort. If you're not in that place, it's like, Lord, where have my eyes been focused? Am I just focusing on what's happening? Listen, I've been in funks. Trust me. So I am not speaking to you in any other, in any kind of disrespect at all. I have been up here, and I have been down here, and it really is much better up here. And, and I mean, I have been down there where I'm like, oh, God, I don't even know if I believe in you anymore. I mean, I've been there pastoring a church doing that, so trust me. And so, you know, and I'm like, Lord, help me. And, I don't and he says, stop complaining. Just stop going over and over. With, he said, just start worshiping. And then I'll, I'll, I'll just stop it and say, Lord, forgive me. And I'll just start worshiping. See, so we have to catch ourselves because what's happening is our soul wants to build its muscles. And, and I said to somebody, I don't remember, I, you know, I said, the picture that the Lord always gives me is I see a picture on, like, I'll see my flesh and it has, you know, and it has those hand weights and it's building up its muscles. And the Lord always says to me, whose muscles are going to be bigger? The flesh or the spirit? And I'm like, well, oh. and then so I'm like, oh God, I praise you. And I start pray, worshiping again, you know, because, you know, we go through these motions. And so the Lord is saying to us, to rise up. He, he doesn't want the enemy to have our prayer life. So I want to read some scriptures, all right? And then we'll close. And we're going we're gonna to activate you. I said, Lord, how do you want me to handle this? He says, I want you activating people. He said, I want people to know that they have to pray. And, and please hear me. I'm not saying you're not praying, but there might be some that you're not praying. Some of you are praying. Some of you are praying long amounts of time, but we want to get a 24-7 cycle of prayer. Yeah. We want to, I want you to know that when you're going to your job, I don't want you to say, oh, God, I can't believe I'm here. Look at what these people, they all get on my nerves. Well, that's praying to the enemy if you want to look at it like that. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's just say, Lord, you know what? I call those things as being not as though they were. That's what I did at my job. Lord, I thank you, even though every single one of them I don't like, but Lord, you love them. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, you're, you might as well be honest. I didn't like them. I said, ugh, this one in particular. I said, but God, you love her. <laughs> you love her and help me to see her through your eyes, Lord. Help me to walk in love. And when I want to give her a little snack, help me to walk in love, oh God, and not, you know, let me lay hands nicely on her. And so, Lord, help me. Have you ever felt that way? Right? It's like, ugh, I got to love her. Oh, Lord. You know, I have to love him. Yes. I said, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me me. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I needed help on that job. And so, um, and he did. I said, give me that heart. Change the atmosphere. Let this atmosphere one of light and not darkness. Lord, I bless every person in there. You know, I mean, there were honestly, and I was learning this stuff. And there were times as one individual I was like, you know, you want to spit. But, but God said, I love her. I love her. And I want her saved. I love her. And I'm like, ugh. So I had to bind the enemy. I had to bind. No, I'm serious. Bind the spirit. Take authority over it. And, and uh, you know, it was just I was in awe. And I have to say, I didn't even go into this. It wasn't like, well, I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm like, oh, my God, help me, Lord. And then when I started to see the change, I was just as surprised as they were. So, you know, the Lord, he's, he just loves to work us. And he's stretching us. And he's stretching us. And he's stretching us. And he's stretching us. And how many of you like to be stretched? You know, when I used to work out with a trainer many years ago, when I worked out with a trainer, she would have me do these 20-minute stretches, and I used to want to smack her because it, I said, would you stop it? I mean, it's really hurting me. And she would stretch me, and she said, this is more important than the exercise itself. And, um, you know, and I didn't like it, but that stretching was good. It makes you flexible. It makes you limber. That's what God wants. He wants us to know that he has called us. And, and listen, you can say, well, I'm new in this, and I don't really know. There's supplication. There's intercession. There's the watchman anointing. There's the seer's gift. Hey, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit knows right how to meet you where you're at. He just wants you to start talking with him. He wants you to read the Bible, and he wants you to put some worship music on. You know, now we can we have all this stuff, and worship him. Him. Just sit there and listen to him. And if you haven't prayed, start 10 minutes. Just start 10 minutes. 
then progress to 15. It's like when you're working out. You know, you're on your bicycle, you start off 10, you go 15, you go 20. It's the same thing. If you're working out your spiritual muscles. And so God is very practical. So, all right, you can go to Ezekiel 22. And I'm going to close and we're going to pray. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. All right? Uh, go to another street. Now, we're called to build a wall. We're called to build a wall around our place of employment, around our family, around our own lives. We build a hedge. We build that wall through our prayers. Listen to this one, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in every circumstance and situations, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. See, we have to replace the anxiety and the worry and give it over to the Lord. Cast our burdens unto him. Don't be anxious. He's saying don't worry. Anyway, we all know that that doesn't ever accomplish anything anyway. Uh, let's go to the next one. In Hebrews uh, 4.16, it says, Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. And the reason I love this is because of the blood of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, we have access to the mercy seat. In other words, we can go before the throne room because many say, say, well, I don't know that I can really do this. I mean, I, you know, I'm not totally right. That's why we repent. And then he says, come boldly before my throne. You have a right. I have a right to come boldly to pray before his throne. He wants us. He loves us. And he wants us to know that, that, that he wants to provide strategy and wisdom. Remember what Ecclesia is, to govern, to, to dictate around those things. We can do that. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.5. Next one. 1 Timothy 2.5. Is that up there? All right, Romans 8.26. I'll read that one. All right. In the same way, the Spirit comes to us and helps our weaknesses. See, that's Holy Spirit in us. And so you may feel weak and alone, but you're never weak and alone. It says we don't know what to pray or what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need and at that right time intercedes on behalf of with sighs and groanings too deep for words. The, the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. That word helpeth in the, in the Greek means to strive with, to help in obtaining, to take hold of one another. See, when we learn to, to call out unto the name of the Holy Spirit, unto the Lord, it's spirit, soul, and body, he's there with us, helping us get through. You're not alone. Right. You're not alone. I don't care how bad your situation looks. You're not alone. I don't care how demonized a family member might be. You're not alone. God is saying, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You have great authority. We have seen miracle upon miracle of people's deliverances and healings that has been phenomenal. And we have many here that can come up here right now and share of the amazing testimonies of the goodness of our God of people who have been healed of, deli of, of diseases, of, of, of addictions, of, of, you know, I mean, I know in my own life of the depression uh, that I had struggled with and the suicidal thoughts all the time. You know, God turns it around. I don't know how he does what he does, but he does, and that's why we, we yield and we surrender unto the Lord. Well, you know, there's a scripture. Um, do you have Romans 8, 34 there? Uh, really? All right, well, I'll read it. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty, and more than that, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God interceding with the Father for us. The Holy Spirit is always there uh, making intercession. And when you're feeling condemned, that is another area that would try to prevent you from praying. When you're feeling condemned, it's not, that God, it's not God. He never condemns us. He only convicts us. So he's saying, who is the one that's condemning you? It's not Jesus. Jesus tried, you know, he wants you to, to recognize where you're at, to recognize your sin. But he doesn't want you to stay in the place of defeat. So we, in order to get healing, you have to understand truth, right? Here's what you're doing wrong. Because if I'm just going to, uh, you know, just uh, not even a, a dress or, or what do you call that, a confront a situation, how is that person going to get help? 
We have to confront the situation with truth and love, and then here's what you need to do. That's what God does to us. You can't get all bent out of shape if there's any kind of confrontation. You have to understand God doesn't want us staying where we're at. But I'm asking you today, where is your heart? Where is your heart at? Are, are, you, are you in the place where you just say, man, Lord, I just, I just love your presence. I want to get there. Some of you might be there. If not, God is saying, listen, I want to help you get, get to that place where you just love my presence. He's not saying, oh, here they go again, these people. How many times am I going to have to tell them? No. He's like, take my hand and let me bring you along. Let me take you to that place to help you in that place of victory. See, that's a loving father. That's our loving father that we have. Now, those whom he loved, the Bible says, he does discipline. And discipline is not harming us, causing us illness, causing us to be depressed. But it's like, you know, when you get in that place, it's like nothing seems to work. And you're frustrated. And it's like, oh, what's going on? And then it's, it's, and after a while, you fall to your knees and say, okay, God, I give up. See, that's, that's his goal is for us to surrender we have to stop blaming everybody in the world for our problems. And so right now I'm asking you to just look at your own heart. Forget others around you. They may have aggravated you. You know, people on my job aggravated me, but I was still in control. I had to allow Holy Spirit to deal with me, that I have a mindset and I'm aligned with him and not allow somebody else's rotten attitude dictate how I'm going to behave. Not happening. Now, is it easier said than done? Yeah. But, but. You can do it. And so the more you're in his presence, and it doesn't mean you don't roll over and play, you roll over and play dead. You draw a line in the sand where you're not going to allow any type of, you know, abuse or anything. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm saying is, Lord, I want my spirit man to be stronger than my soul. And so Holy Spirit is asking us, will you surrender to him in a greater way? Will you, where you have not taken the time to really spend that time with him, I don't care if it's morning, I don't care if it's night, I don't care if it's on your walk, that's between you and the Lord. It's however, it's that you do it, it's that your heart is yielded, that your heart is, is soft, and that your heart is surrendered to the Lord. Because we have gifting, we have seed in us that God hasn't been able to tap into because we've been negligent. We have pulled back. We haven't allowed the Holy Spirit, and there's frustration to deal with us. And so he, like I said, he's, he's thrilled with us. He loves us. And he's saying, I just don't want you staying where you're at. As parents, that's why you push your kids to do things. Clean your house. <laughs> Go to school. Get good grades. You, you, you be, why? Because you don't want them to stay where you were at. You want them to be better than where you're at, right? Well, that's God. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I just thank the Lord for his faithfulness. And I thank God. What I so appreciate about him is that he meets us where we're at. He never makes you feel condemned or inadequate. He never wants you to believe that you can't attain that goal, that you can't have this marvelous prayer life, that you can't have your answers to prayer. That's not the heart of the Father at all. I don't understand everything. I don't know why a lot of things happen at times, but he didn't ask me to understand it. He asked me to pray. He asked me to yield my heart to him. He asked me to surrender. He's a good God. And he's faithful and true. And, and, you know, you may be stuck. You might be in a situation where you just feel so disappointed and you don't think, like, God really has been there for you. I just want you to know he really is. And it's okay to be honest with the Lord and tell him that, that this is where I'm at. This is, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't get all this. That's all right. You know, he, he knows the end. The Bible says in Isaiah, and I love this, he knows the end from the beginning. He already has a plan. And so don't cut yourself short by cutting that plan off. <clears throat> so I'm going to pray, but I just, I do want to give someone an opportunity. If, if you want to, uh, if, if, I don't know everybody here, but if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you never did, I'd love for you to come on up. If you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, I want you to come on up. You know, the Lord wants every age group to know how to pray. And, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, I know a lot of times the, the younger ones look like they rather have a root canal when they're in here. I've seen the faces, okay? 
But the Lord loves you, and the Lord wants to empower you too. And he wants you to know that he sees your heart. He sees the disappointment. He sees the fears and the struggles that you're going through in school. He sees the, the kids that have mocked you or you want to be just like them. And so you don't want them to know you're going to church. I get all that. I get all that. And so does the Lord. But he wants to know that he'll give you an unfair advantage by giving you a strategy. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you the peace. He'll give you a favor that you, you would wish you had. And it would come from the Lord. See, God's going to touch every generation here. I'm telling you. That's his plan. So if you, if you want to rededicate your life or if you, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want you to make your way up. If everybody's good, then that's fine. Um, I just want to wait a moment if there's anybody who'd like to rededicate their lives to the Lord. All right, so we're going to pray. So, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your faithfulness here. And, Lord, I thank you that you are giving us a charge to move forward and go beyond in you. Lord, your desire for us is to come up into a place to have an understanding of you, to have that open heavens and, and just in, in, in our sphere. You know, your marketplace ministers, the Lord is saying, you have to govern that place. People who own businesses, you have to govern that place. And you have the authority of God in you. And, we're, and again, we're going to teach and, and teach you all the different aspects of prayer. So I really want to encourage you to come on out. I want you to be encouraged to come out to pray. Amen. But I want you to just lay hands on your heart today. If you would just say, I choose to make myself a house of prayer. And, Lord, I want to come up higher. Amen. So, Lord, I just thank you, Father. You heard the chart. You heard their heart. And I give a charge, oh, God, that we are designated to be a house of prayer for all nations. Lord, you've called us to be that peculiar people that hear you, that know you, and that understand how to break through, that understand how to devise strategies and plans to break things and to shift things in the atmosphere. I just thank you, Father, that you're calling us to be the Reese Howells. Some of you might know who he was, and, and uh, there were so many, but Reese Howells was used mightily in Wales to, to pray about World War II and, and the, the um, German army, the attack that, that, that was trying to overtake the British and how things shift. It's documented. We can govern through our prayers. So, Lord, we just thank you that you're, you're calling us to come up and to meditate on you, not us. Lord, we repent where we have only focus on our problems, where we've been navel stairs, oh God. Lord, we want to shift that where we focus on the great I am, the character of God, the goodness of God. And Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you're activating our prayer life. You're activating that intercessor, that prophetic intercessory call upon us. The watchmen, there are many watchmen. Lord, activate the watchmen. Activate the seer prophets. Activate your, your intercessors. Activate all of us here, oh God, that are called yes. to pray. Lord, we thank you that your word says in Job 22 that we shall decree that thing and it shall be established unto us. Your word says in the light of your countenance will, will, will overshadow us. And it says, and even those that are not innocent that we're praying for will come to know you. So, Lord, we just thank you that you have given us power to decree. Life and death are in the power of our tongue. But, Lord, we will decree your word. Lord, your word says that you, you, know, you said, you said that uh, your people perish for a lack of knowledge. We're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not anything else but knowledge. Knowledge of the greatness of who you are and discernment. So, Lord, I decree and declare that there will be a rise here for a hunger of yeah, your Lord. word. Do it, Lord. Lord, where we will be devourers of your word. So, Lord, we just thank you for your presence here. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for, for miracles. We thank you, Father, for businesses. I'm telling you, I really feel like the Lord is emphasizing businesses here. And the Lord is saying that, that he will give you strategies. Some of you are asking for why there's been delay, why there's been frustration in your businesses, or 
The Lord is saying that, that he will devise that plan. He, adds, he wants you to wait. He wants you to, to get that hope. He wants you to understand that he is the God of breakthrough, and he will break through in your businesses. Now, I speak to every stagnant area in these businesses, and I decree a breakthrough. I say the, the wind of the Holy Spirit will break off the stagnancy over businesses right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Father that you have a plan here. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you want to uncover and reveal. We thank you for all the businesses here. And we thank you and decree increase in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so, and the other thing before I close, I just want you to encourage you to pray in tongues. Yeah. Pray in tongues every day. Start off 10 minutes. Go to 30 minutes. Go to an hour. Go as long as you can. Go all day long. You can be praying all day long, driving your car, riding your bike, if you ride a bike, walking, <laughs> you know, whatever you're doing, you can be praying in tongues. Right. I want to encourage you with that. So if you, if anybody wants prayer, we have a prayer team here. Did you want to say something? Oh. Say something else. Um, so we, you, I'll call the prayer team up. And um, if anybody uh, wants prayer today, please come. And, uh, but I just want to hear great reports of your prayer life and how it's changed and how it's increased. And I'll tell you about mine too. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.